Hello, this is Bill Webb, aka Billy Indiana. I recently received a few games for my birthday, so I'm going to show you what they are and do some unboxings. First up, Ticket to Ride London. Our family loves the Ticket to Ride games and we're excited to try this little one out. Second, Baron Park. This will be our first polyomino game and we're excited to try it. And last but not least, Near and Far. We love Ryan Lockett and Red Raven games, so we're really excited to get this one going too. So, let's get to the table. All right, now we're gonna unbox Ryan Lockett and Red Raven Games Near and Far. Been very excited to get this one. Um, it's a little bit more on the expensive side, and so I think it's well worth it for what you get in the box, but just kind of waiting and waiting and waiting till I found that perfect sale that was going to give me a good opportunity. And then with the uh, birthday money my kids passed on, it was a, a pretty quick decision to pick this one up when I found that good sale. Um, we love Ryan Lockett games. We have quite a few. Now let's go ahead and start opening it up. This one, uh, Near and Far, is a sequel of sorts to Above and Below, and it's in the same world as Islebound, and I believe also the... 8-Minute Empire games. Uh, we have um, Above and Below in our collection and really enjoy that game. That was kind of our first experience with Ryan Lockett games. And uh, we also have Isle Bound, which also really one of our favorite games to play. Love the art that uh, he puts into the games and just the style of his art. I think really fits with our preferences. And then uh, we've got, I think, all of the 8-Minute Empire games. And we also have Megaland and uh, Ancient Worlds is coming with my Sleeping Gods Kickstarter when those are able to be shipped. So, uh, yeah, we really enjoy a lot of his games and look forward to a few more coming in the future. Uh, here on the back, you can see this is the sequel to the hit Above and Below. It says two to four players age 13 and above, 90 to 120 minutes. Search for a lost city in a strange and wonderful world of ruins. Manage and recruit adventures, each with a unique identity. Read from a book of stories, creating a memorable tale each time you play. Choose your path and connected quest lines. Includes a gorgeous atlas of 11 maps to play on. Buy skills for your character over a 10 map campaign. Two to four players, 90 minutes. So, let's get this open and see what's inside. There we go, it's a heavy box. <laughs> All right, so right on top, we've got a book here. No title, that's really interesting. There's uh, some really cool art, but no title on what it is. It is the storybook. So definitely not gonna reveal any spoilers here. I imagine probably a lot of people have played this, uh, even though we haven't yet. Uh, but you can see the stories that you'll be reading. It's a narrative story-driven kind of a game. Hundreds of stories that you'll find in here. So. That's a big part of Above and Below, and even a bigger part of Near and Far from what I've heard. We've got the rule book. Uh, the rule book is pretty thick here, 40 pages. I uh, like on the back here this player actions. It's nice. You see the player turn, a summary of symbols, and an index. Uh, sometimes the back is just a picture. I like when they've got some key information here. Um, so looks like there is a lot of text too. So although there's some pictures starting to show up there and some margins and open space too, so not a super dense 40 pages, but looks like there is a lot to figure out and learn, so excited to, whoa, there's a nice picture, picture summary of all the components. Again, we just really love Ryan Lockett's style of art, so excited to have these on the table at any time now. Beautiful book here. I'm guessing this might be the map book. Love that co cover. Yeah, and this is, again, uh, just what draws us in is the art and the story. We're really lovers of games that have a lot of theme. And you can see here, uh, you get to travel from place to place. Every place has a name. This is Meteor Mountain, Toxic Desert, Cloudy Valley. And so depending on where you're going, uh, Fire Delta here with the volcanoes. Uh, you would turn to a different page in the map, Rock Tooth Isles. I'm guessing this is uh, some connection to uh, Islebound with the islands there, maybe. 
and then Mammoth Jungle, the last ruin. So really cool that your board game changes depending on where you travel on the map. And then these look like the player boards, very similar to the player boards in Above and Below. A little bit different layout, but similar look to them. Very gorgeous art. <laughs> I guess I don't need to keep saying that. It's obvious. Um, and then uh, here is the track board, like uh, the main city board, I think is what they call it. And all the different places in the city you can go, the town hall, the saloon, the stables, general store, farm, mystic's hut, and the mine. And then I think this must be like a reputation tracker or something um, based on uh, above and below. I know you track your reputation there. And there's two sides to this. I don't know exactly why it might be player count. I think there's different modes of the game. I think there's like an arcade mode and a campaign mode, uh, maybe even another character driven mode if I remember correctly. But uh, so maybe the different sides help you play those different modes. And then uh, lots of punch boards here. And I'll put some of these under the camera so you can see some of the art close up here in a second. I won't punch them out, but I just see some of that. Um, a bag. Not sure what this bag is for, but we'll find out. And some baggies. And then lots of little bits and parts. Look like these are little tent, camping tent, and circle tokens. Ooh, the dice look pretty cool. I'll put those under the camera as well so you can see them. Um, some kind of gems. I don't know if that's the amber from the amber mines uh, or if it's a totally different kind of a gem for this game. Not sure. Some kind of a score pad. And then some standee bases, pencil, and then lots of cards. So um, I will put some of these cards and other components under the close-up now so you can get a look. Uh, but <laughs> just the detail, you know, the, the art here, even almost seeing a story here inside the box <laughs> with the uh, insert here. Really beautiful. Okay, uh, let me get the other camera going so I can show you some close-ups. So here under the close-up camera, you can see a few things. You can see the different resource tokens here. I think that might be some kind of meat or something. I'm not really sure. It looks kind of like bacon. Uh, and then there's fish, and these look like clamshells of some sort, so we'll find out what those resources are. There's books. I know there's also books in Above and Below and Islebound. Um, and then there's these little, or at least Islebound. I can't remember, actually. Maybe they're not, might not be in Above and Below. And then there's uh, some kind of gem tokens here, the different colors for the different players, I assume, for their camping tents. Um, we've got our little... Um, packing bird here uh, and then we've got some coins and just a few of the characters there's many many more characters but just so you can see the art behind some I assume just player move tokens or scoring tokens on the reputation track or something uh, and then uh, just some of those gems again that we saw before and the dice are really cool kind of marbled color so those are some of the uh, different components in the game now let's take a look at the cards so here we have the different kinds of cards. Um, the backs of the cards here you can see for the majority. Uh, these are the character cards it looks like. And um, I think this might be for the character mode of the game. And it looks like there's a few of the cards for each player. So there's a couple more for that character. See a lot of different characters for the game. And uh, I'm assuming that this is for character development and tracking their abilities, because uh, there's these feel different. They're not the kind of uh, waxy type of cards. They're papery. They're thick. Um, you can see that it's not like thin paper, but you definitely would probably write on these and track something. So uh, it'd be interesting to see how those factor in here. And I don't know what, I think these might be the artifact cards. They all have the same back. Um, and then all different kinds of artifacts, a lantern, uh, pike, tent, trade tent, rusty bot, home of tablets, cookbook, phase map, cloud boots, messenger shoes. So you can just see lots and lots of different items. You get a taste of it there. 
very cool. And then these red backed cards, there's actually a couple of different backs in this deck. Looks like some player aids kind of in the middle. And then there's this different backing. Uh, so we'll set aside those player aids. The ones with the red backs uh, look like there's some sort of story or goal cards or something. Dogfish. I'm not sure what that says. Ikra. Incompetent Pirate. Marlick. <laughs> the Poisoned Limb. Well, maybe these are events. Things you would encounter on the map or something. Wooly Mammoth. Wulu Mammoth. <laughs> soul coin so those are the red backed cards and then in that same stack uh, there were these backs um, looks like maybe just some more artifacts here maybe just the way they were packaged yeah same back all right and this stack these all have this or oh looks like there's a few mixed in here so there's just a little bit packaged. Maybe I shuffled them accidentally up a little bit, but we got all these. These look very above and below-esque on the back. Mysterious Cave, Ancient Castle, Unseen Sinkhole, Canny Prospector, Poison Well. And so looks like those are also maybe things you're... Oh, this is Search and Camp, uh, Cheat and Recruit. So this must be sort of your uh, binary decision for the arcade mode, maybe. And then... In this pile, we've got some a chief and some bosses and uh, mixed in here with these other cards. And if we look what's on the other side, um, so we've got Slingshot, Bandit, Ancient Robot, Stone Warrior, Raider. So it looks like there's uh, different people or <laughs> robots. Uh, and then also Rusty Bell. Uh, fishing pole, old journal, so items, maybe these are things and people that you would encounter outlaws uh, while you're roaming the map. Ooh, that's a cool one. The Ivory Queen. So, Nomos? Na Nomos? Nomos? <laughs> Captain Shreya? Shreya? Mystics. Yeah, so, pretty cool. So those are the cards. Um, the last thing I'll show you are the standees. I didn't have those out a minute ago, so we'll just move the cards off the side. And we'll put out, these are the characters that you would play with, I think, so. Um, and they have those little standees that I showed when we were unboxing. But looks like these would be the people you would play with. All right, and again, Pretty cool standees. And I think that's it. So we've gone through everything in the box in a fair bit of detail. Really excited to get this one to the game. I don't know that we'll have time today. Uh, we got a lot of other things on the calendar today, but tomorrow being Sunday, very excited to give this one a shot. I uh, may have to go through a little bit of a Red Raven Ryan Lockett marathon and start with the eight minute empires and get to Isle Bound above and below and cap it all off with some near and far. Very excited to try this one out. Hope this was entertaining or helpful or useful for you. Um, as always, thank you for watching. And this is Billy Indiana signing off. Uh -oh.